Why hello there, welcome back to my channel, it's me, Agostino Zinga, and it's so great to have you back on my channel once again. If it's your first time checking out the show, I hope you enjoy, and at the end, if you like what you hear, make sure you smash that like, hit subscribe, and leave me a comment down below. I did a little bit of a beard shave to make sure I got the face looking nice and slim, nice and tall. If you think I look nice and slim and tall, make sure you smash that Kate Moss blonde lady emoji down below in the comments if you think I look a little bit skinnier now that I've got rid of the beard and my cardio is finally starting to work. Let me know, let me know. For goodness sake, man, this Brendan Shaw v Malik and Justin and the cutting weight podcast drama nonsense keeps on rumbling on, <sighs> but I'm bored of it. I really am bored of it. I swear on my life I'm bored. But because I reported on part of the story, I guess I've got to follow it through. So if you're familiar, to give you a brief synopsis, Brendan Shaw had these two openers on his podcast called Malik and Chappelle um, along the way of them trying to recapture the magic of the original T-Fat K show something went a bit awry Brendan kind of fell out with Malik Malik was booted off of the show was he fired was he let go did he leave of his own accord who really knows and then throughout that turmoil it's now turned into another issue with Malik and his other friend called Justin who he does his other podcast called Cut and Wait with but somehow Justin is associated with Brendan because he goes on the road with him loads of nonsense LA stuff that doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things right but let's be for real none of this stuff actually matters in the grand scheme of things but it's good to distract yourself from all the actual serious stuff that's going on there that you have absolutely no control over and you might as well entertain yourself with this bullshit la drama that's going on at the moment so it looks like things have gotten even worse between <laughs> that entire trifecta of talented individuals because it seems like Justin has finally broke his silence and let everybody know something we kind of all noticed because I think in a pri I think maybe there might have been a couple of episodes so far that we've seen where Justin hasn't necessarily been on the Cutting Weight podcast and the whole um, story or explanation we were given from Brendan Shaw was that you know Malik was leaving to explore his own ventures and that he was going to you know explore you know taking the Cutting Weight podcast and doing that full time. Obviously, we now learned that maybe there was some something more untoward that happened behind the scenes but again we're not there nobody knows nobody actually cares but now we found out that the interesting part of it is that Brendan Shaw the one guy that we all think is a bit of a doof right probably the most um successful dummy that exists in Hollywood point blank and that's a good thing I think even he would say that I think that's actually a credit to him that he's able to be you know and I think he'd actually say that I think he'd actually admit but the funny thing is, Brendan Shaw, the guy that a lot of people would kind of characterize as being a little bit of a doof, somebody who I think is maybe a little bit unfairly maligned, but hey, you know, it is what it is. People pick their villains on social media. But I'm sure he would say himself, he's not the sharpest tool in the box. It's definitely not a slight on him in any way, shape or form. But the funny thing is, the guy that everybody counts out, the guy that everybody thinks is a bit of a dummy, the guy that everyone thinks is lucky to have his position, the guy that everyone thinks is, you know, a bully, all this sort of stuff, whatever you might think of him, he is the guy that's responsible for essentially destroying an entire... <laughs> A group of friends because of his bullshit podcast that he's doing. Brendan Shaw has single-handedly managed to destroy the careers. Let's not say the careers. Maybe he's going to help them career-wise, but definitely friendships of all three of his openers in some varying way. And Justin has finally kind of broke his silence and let the fans know everything that we were all aware of, that he's now stepping away from the Cutting Weight podcast and joining Brendan Shaw full-time to be his opener. I don't know, to buy weed for him. I don't know what he does out there. Who really gives a shit? But let's see what he has to say, and then we can comment as we go on what's going on y'all it's your boy two-tone i know you wanted to know what's going by the way from watching countless videos of dark side feel whenever someone starts to fidget and starts to do a little rocking on a chair that's always a sign of their line always <laughs> on with everything listen man i gotta depart y'all know how this thing goes man it's hollywood you know how things go in hollywood you know all good things gotta come to an end you know, when it comes down to it, man, I appreciate every, every. You know what? So I know it's only two minutes long, but I, most of you have probably already watched this video. So please bear with me. But you know what? I kind of have to rate him for that response. He might be the only person out of that whole L.A. comedy scene, you know, trifecta or that sphere, that world, who's kind of come out and just said, you know what? It's Hollywood, man. You know what the deal is. I have to go with the winning team. Whoever's up, whoever's winning, whoever's kind of paying the money, whoever's kind of, you know, cutting the check, whoever's allowing me to go on tour, you know, perform in front of an audience, that's who I'm going to go with. I'm not going to go and, you know, join this guy over here who has, you know, just a podcast with, I don't know, whatever many subscribers he has, probably not anywhere near close to what t -Fat K are doing at the moment. Come on, I've got to think of my career. I've got to look after me. It's all about me, 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 me. Right? He, at least he come out and said that. Whereas these other podcasters are trying to pretend, they're trying to feign that they have some sort of deep friendship and love for the person. I've got love for him. You know, we spoke behind the scenes. No, you didn't, you liar. You didn't speak behind the scenes. You haven't spoken to him since whatever news about that guy broke on the interwebs. And it's okay to say that. It's okay. But 
but he's only the person I've actually heard say, you know what? It's Hollywood and I had to pick the winning team. Can't hate on that. You really can't. Each and every one of y'all, man, for helping the pod to grow. You guys, man, really taught me a lot, you know, more so about myself and being able to to speak on on camera and feel comfortable and people looking at you crazy, going through the motions and being able to just be myself and y'all accept me 100 percent, you know. Yeah, you know, I appreciate just being able to, you know, when I came to the pod, you know, I was just really more so to help my friend, you know, and <laughs> help him grow and be one again, of the... Again, again, so to stop again, again, same with the rocking chairs. Whenever someone enunciates like that, with my friend, with my friend, right? That's always a sign of some duplicitous behavior behind the scenes. Always a sign. Who, me? I wouldn't do that. I can't believe you think I would do that. Right, it's always a sign that somebody's being two faced. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it, man. Brendan Shaw did this, you know. Brendan Shaw ruined these three black men's lives, mate. Honestly, black lives do not matter in that T Fat K studio. They do not matter one bit. The bigger podcast that I felt that we can be, you know, along the way, you know, beefs start and things happen. And unfortunately, I'm just not the beefing type. You feel me? Um, I'm more so just, you know, cool back, you know, chill. Um, most of the times I felt like when it came down to it, you know, everyone has to make their own decisions. You know, I always try to be the voice of reason. So basically he picked thick boy merch money <laughs> over his friends. What do you, how much do you reckon Brandon Shaw pays his openers? Do you think they get a set fee? Do they get an allowance? I don't know how it works in comedy. I don't know if you're meant to get... I guess you're meant to get paid. Obviously, you do get paid. I'm assuming if you're an opener, right? You do get paid. Is there a thing? I don't know what it is. Maybe someone knows. If you know in the comments what happens to openers and what the kind of business structure is and stuff, let me know in the comments. I don't know. Do openers get paid? Is the opportunity the big the big thing? Like, for instance, if you're going to... I guess if you're going on tour with Joe Rogan, for sure he's going to pay you, right? Um, He's at the highest level. But if you're going on tour with, like, a Burt Kreischer, for instance, does he have to pay you? Or is it the opportunity alone to play in front of, you know, a sold out crowd everywhere you go, more of the thing. And then obviously he looks after you in terms of putting you up in a hotel, giving you food and all that stuff, um, which is a bit strange too, right? What do you, does that mean that does he cut you off the money or you have to keep going to him to go get your, to go get your flipping lunch token so you can have a lunch and it's, it's a bit, it feels a bit yucky in it. You would want to kind of have your own autonomy so you can go and eat when and if, when you like, but I guess that's the whole point of touring. Maybe you just have to all sit together at a table and pretend to laugh at the comics, at the kind of headliners jokes, isn't it? Right? I'd imagine that's probably how it probably works out. And then at the end of the night, he then, if he's gracious enough, will give you whatever's left on the tips. <sighs> Could it be me? Hey, sometimes beefing is just not the way to go. But, and oftentimes, people are going to choose where they decide to do or what they decide to do, rather. <laughs> with that being said man again y'all make sure y'all still comment like and subscribe and y'all make sure y'all still snake, support the pod i'm on my own podcast as well uh it's called think before you speak if you guys what are snake, with me snake. on the journey um pretty interactive how interactive can a podcast really be though right you like subscribe you leave me comments on here sometimes i reply you might send me a, a suggestion of a video that I might do, you know, whatever. Like, what's the interactive part of it? Let's let's relax, right? Let's relax. There's probably way too many podcasts out there anyway, mine included, right? They probably don't need to exist. If I disappeared in a Thanos finger slap, finger slap, finger snap, no one would actually care, right? For the most part of it. Of course, my family and close friends would be distraught. But apart from that, no one would give a crap on the internet. It would just keep going on, right? The, the wheels will just keep turning. Life will progress. So this idea that you somehow have an interactive, podcast how you have an interactive podcast but you're ditching your friends <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> these guys are insane so much love to everybody in the cutting weight family evan uh lola and and roly boy for show sure, you know and uh we out here man that's off when it the funny thing is he doesn't actually mention um what's his name malik's name for in the entire video you know he doesn't actually mention it he just calls him roly boy and just in, you know insinuates and all that 
loopity loop stuff but again hey i think it's snakish behavior if you're my friend and you're choosing a new friend that we just met over me because he has money because that's what it basically is and if you reduce it and take away all the uh, aspirations of being an actor and a comedian and stuff at the base level what he's basically done is ditched his actual friend and again who, who knows if these guys are actually friends who cares friendships in la look like they're you know they're just they're just flipping situational and circumstantial regardless cool but in from the optics point of view from us standing from the outside it looks like he chose brendan over malik because he has more uh, ability to maybe propel his career or give him a platform to showcase his talents right quote unquote talents we don't really know what they are but who cares he could because that's the funny thing he could end up being the next dave Chappelle, right and then this could be a genius move or he could just end up being a bit of a you know whatever right a bit of a run-of-the-mill name and then it's like, was it really worth it? I guess it is if you live in LA, isn't it? But I don't know, man. I think this whole LA thing as well, it's getting a bit of a bad rap, I think. I don't think these people are a good reflection or even some of the TikTok kids and stuff is a good reflection on what everyday life is like for people that live in LA. But I think it's a unique situation because of the sort of industry these guys work in. If you work in the entertainment industry and you're above the age of 25, you're essentially in a perpetual constant state of arrested development, it feels like, right? Because in order to become a successful actor, comedian, whatever it may be, public figure, you kind have to maintain that little bit of silly goose energy right from what you know what brian kind of used to say a lot usually most adults you know via circumstances via relationships via moving away whatever it may be as the years progress you automatically start becoming more and more quote-unquote mature maybe not mature as you'd like but you obviously stop doing the things that you were doing when you were 17 when you're maybe 28 when you're 29 when you're 30 and it just keeps progressing year on year in but if you're in hollywood and you want to work in the entertainment industry you kind of have to put that to a side and kind of tap into the inner kid inside of you and kind of keep that fed and keep continually acting like a bit of a fool, quote unquote. It kind of reminds me of like the Burt Kreischer analogy, right? Where you kind of have to, you know, you would never guess Burt Kreischer has like two kids who are like teenagers and a wife and stuff, you know, based on how he acts on podcasts and stuff and how he goes on and, and talks, right? He kind of sounds like a bit of a frat guy, but you know, he's a grown man with a family and stuff and responsibilities. But in order for him to be funny on stage and to have that kind of, you know, mess of a personality on podcast he has to continually keep that little infantile spirit of his alive and because of that you're always going to come across a little bit immature and a little bit silly because this whole thing is a little bit silly and if you thought this thing couldn't get any sillier oh i have a surprise for you i have a surprise for you it looks like malik decided to reply in the comments of the youtube video that justin uploaded to the cutting weights youtube channel and he isn't too happy it sounds like if you l listen to what he actually is saying in his statement he doesn't sound best pleased or convinced by the words coming out of justin's mouth so let's hear what malik had to say i completely disagree with the false statements that justin used in his departing remarks on the cutting weight podcast in this video justin double talked about hollywood beefs and being a voice of reason is a bunch of bullshit designed to shield his true motives the picture is clear for anyone who has sound mind to see and understand justin is over there with brendan's gossiping lying snaked ass butt kissing Chappelle. <laughs> Mate, this is so perfect. This is like our version of like um the Real Housewives of Pontiac, isn't it? Really, isn't it? This is so lame. Why are, do we care about this stuff? Why is this so funny? Why is it so entertaining? If you find it entertaining, if you find this funny, make sure you smash that like button for me because this is so dumb. <laughs> These grown men bickering over dumb podcasts that don't matter, stand-up careers that probably aren't going to go too far and just entertainment careers that have probably haven't even started, right? For the record, I'm not beefing on anyone, but dealing with this particular situation, Justin, I saw your snake moves, just like I see Brendan <laughs> outmaneuvered both of you. Um, I now see what, I now realize um, what cutting weight really means. Ooh, I like what he did there. Um, all that negative energy and gossiping going over there behind the scene wasn't for me. Clearly it works for you, so you can have your mouth full. Ouch, is that a homophobic joke? <laughs> Let's continue. But don't try to spin shit to make me look unethical because you don't have any principles. Me being silent on y'all BS was me giving y'all a pass, but you deciding to make weak underhanded comments about me is why I'm calling you and them out. Now, if I'm shady and a liar, you divas should stand up like men and call me out on it. <laughs> Don't throw a rock and hide behind fake comments in comment section. If y'all have anything to me, put it out there. If not, put respect next to my name. Yo, man, like I said earlier, this guy, like I like Malik. He seems like a decent kind of enough dude, but aren't these guys like proper embarrassing? Like, isn't this whole thing, this whole charade and just 
a nonsense, right? For the start of it, right? They all looks like they're all competing for Brendan's love, right? Brendan's flipping girl in the flipping bachelor, right? They're all trying to hook up with him and try and make sure that their careers are going in the right direction. But let's call a spade a spade. This guy's even fortunate to have a career himself, right? He's winging it. But yeah, but everyone's winging it. Everybody's winging it. Everyone's winging it. So for them to kind of, you know, destroy each other's friendship like this in public, go back and forth like women on comments and stuff, making videos, it's just really pathetic. And the other thing that's really pathetic about it is the entertainment industry. If you're really good and you can generate engagement or, you know, clicks and views and people like what you do, then you're going to be hard to ignore. Somebody's going to be willing to give you a shot. If you're not good at what you do and you don't have talent, you don't have the if factor and x factor, it doesn't matter who you stand next to. It really doesn't. So all of this kind of, you know, posturing and beating on the chest and put respect to my name stuff in comments is really cringe because if the, the long and short of it is if Justin did mess up by aligning himself with Brendan, Malik will be proven right if he just continues with his career. Continue auditioning, continue doing stand up continue doing what you're doing and eventually the cream will rise to the top whoever is the most talented whoever's the best the better stand up the better comic will be the one that progresses further in their career now maybe there's a bit of a caveat because it's la and people kind of are a little bit you know snaky and sometimes being in the right place can sometimes help your overall career and who you stand next to i understand but i'm a real big believer in the idea that really and truly especially in the entertainment industry right if you're really good at what you do people will forgive just about anything that you do outside of you know your actual profession well now, whether it kind of hits the LA Times and people start writing flipping op-eds about you is another thing. But for the most part, if you're really good at what you do, people will tolerate your stinky attitude. Look at Ellen DeGeneres. She's been the flipping B-I-T-T-H behind the scenes for decades. According to all these articles that we see popping up from reading between the lines and the accounts of people that worked with her, whether they were people that she needed to propel her career, people that were working underneath her, she's been a little bit of a B-I-T-T-H for a very, very long time. And it's probably been a bit of a worst kept secret in Hollywood. And she's been thriving. So that's proof to show if you're really good at what you do, and the numbers kind of align you're over exceeding your targets people will forgive just about anything and in the moment her number decides to dip guess what suddenly she's having a change of career suddenly she wants to explore different things it's you know it's a bit predictable in that regard so all this sort of back and forth stuff on the internet it just feels a bit cringe but anyway let's continue to end it malik says to all the malik b haters you all don't know me you can all say negative things about me on my social platforms or any platform but you can't prove it i said if fifty thousand people subscribe to the cutting weight podcast I will let them know the truth on why I'm not longer part of TFAT K. Huh? Is that what happened? Was he trying to bribe the audience into supporting him so he could dish, so he could kind of, you know, dish the dirt on Brendan Shaw? This guy is insane. Does he really... Are there even 50,000 people out there that give a crap about what Brendan Shaw does anyway? Like, what is this? <laughs> Honestly, this Malik guy is absolutely insane. So no wonder this went pear-shaped. So think about what happened. So I guess he was trying to hold this whole subscriber thing over people's heads if they went to hear the dirt on why he actually left the real reasons because obviously Brendan said that he left to pursue his own thing, which now we know not to be true. So he was holding it over people's heads and like, hey, I got the information, subscribe to my stuff, then you'll get forward, which I, I don't blame the hustle. But 50 thousand is a bit insane maybe if you wanted to hit like 10 20 thousand subscribers cool but 50 thousand subscribers is flipping nutty behavior so that doesn't end up happening he ends up kind of withholding um the information ends up going on another podcast and dancing around the topic and being a little bit you know vague and all that sort of stuff and and using flipping quotes that he probably pulled from 48 laws of power and stuff and then eventually the crowd ends up turning on him <laughs> which is again ironic considering that everyone thinks that brendan's a dummy but if you look at what's actually happening <laughs> it looks like uh, malik and justin are probably vibing for that position way more than he is and now he's in a position where he's leaving comments under a video of his former co-host explaining why he left and then pinning it himself in order to get back at the haters i'm like ah my head hurts at how dumb this is my head hurts but continues don't be mad because all you couldn't make that happen because i'm not it only means that people are tired of gossip and negative energy no people just didn't want to subscribe to your channel Fifty thousand of them just didn't want to subscribe it's not about that any all but anyway continue the people want individuals with morals providing them with good entertaining content i we gonna start preaching now to, to, to it to give you life to christ people want more individual morals providing them with good entertaining content and that's my goal all you are welcome to join me get to know me so unless anybody in that crew comes at me wrong i'm done talking about tfat k we don't believe you you're not done talking about tfat k you're gonna talk about them again you know what i mean it's your five minutes in the flipping sun i don't blame him for doing so in it it is what it is you gotta play the game but let's be for real you're gonna keep talking about them as long as they keep talking about you that's the truth of it but anyway in the long and short of it that's basically it you know the kind weight podcast is another victim of of the brendan schub curse right he ends careers left right and center people think he's a dummy when in fact he might be the actual smartest person 
the room. Somehow he's managed to get, you know, he's managed to turn T Frack K into his podcast where he sits in the middle with Brian and Chappelle kind of vying for his attention, laughing at all these dumb jokes. And now he's kind of caused a rift between these openers and this made them decide who they're going to follow. Are you going to follow Malik? Are you going to follow me, your leader, on our e bikes as we pose for these soy boy pictures all over the United States? That's what Brendan Schaub's done. Right, people need to put more respect on that guy's name. He actually might be the smartest guy in the room, right? Somehow, through all these cancellations, all these things happening, he, that guy that can just about barely enunciate, has managed to survive. He survived the great Amy Kaufman, you know, LA Times article slaying. There's a, supposed to be some other article coming out that people in the comedy community are a bit nervous about, that I've heard people mention whispers of. He's managed to survive and still thrive, you know, thick boy bikes. Now he's doing thick boy weightlifting. He's taking tests he's blibbing plumping up his lips he's getting dumb tattoos and he's thriving right driving his pink porsche purple i think pink whatever it is all around la honking his horn at all the haters and saying to you what are we doing here what? <laughs> honestly what a legend what a legend brendan Shaw is but hey here we are here we are, the great t Fat K debacle has finally come to a close. I'm hoping it has. Anyway, well, t Fat K, you know, can't wait podcast debacle, but I'm, I'm sure it hasn't. Who really cares? This whole thing is a nonsense. But I'm glad you've been here with me to enjoy this nonsense. And if you enjoy this nonsense and you like what you hear, you like what you see, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe. And of course, leave me a comment down below. Do you, like me, believe Brendan Schaub is the Elon Musk of the LA comedy scene? Or do you think he's a little bit less than that? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Peace.